Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to tell you guys about how to set up an Android VM on your QNAP NAS. Now why would you do this? Well there's loads of reasons really. As much as I enjoy using the user interface of QNAP's QTS platform and that's the same with a lot of other NAS brands too. There is just something appealing about using an operating system that I'm familiar with. Be it Windows, be it Android, whatever. And installing an Android VM on your QNAP NAS has a lot of advantages, notwithstanding the fact that you can dual OS this system in a number of ways and bridge the gap between these apps. It also allows you to run this VM on your NAS while the NAS is running 24 seven for your media, your security and more. And you can synchronize your phone, your tablet, those devices, even your Chromebook with the VM via the network and the internet. And then it in turn, can synchronize with the NAS and there's lots of ways in which you can bridge a lot of smart systems and Google Home as well. So having a, an Android VM is becoming very, very appealing indeed, and particularly for Chromebook users that want to make the big switch and the connection between those devices and smart home technology. But again, a little hell of myself there. I've got to say as well, I've got a hell of a sore throat today. So I do apologize if I seem a bit croaky in today's vid and I am recording it at the other end of the office. So it's a little echoey too. So let's face it, I've really set some barriers down for you guys today, but I promise it is going to be worth your time. So what do you need for today's video? Well, obviously you need a QNAP. It'd be a bit ridiculous if you didn't have a QNAP for this installation. So make sure you are using a QNAP that's at least a four core CPU and not any old four core. It needs to be at least a four core that's using an x86 64 bit processor. The reason being is you are using an OS that's a little bit more graphical than most and you will need a CPU that can handle graphics. So I'm talking an Intel Celeron, an Intel Pentium, um, an Intel Core, an Intel Xeon, that kind of processor. And obviously the more powerful CPU you use, the better the VM output or the multiple VM instances you can run. On top of that, it's worth highlighting you are going to need at least 4 gig of memory. Ideally, you're looking for about 8 gig, but the reason we go for 4 is because you're going to need at least 2 gig to run the virtual machine and another 2 gig to run the NAS in the background. You have to make sure that you leave enough resources to run both the QNAP NAS and any applications therein. So if you're running a Plex Media server, maybe you're using QBR Pro for surveillance uh, or something like that, bear in mind you're gonna have to leave some memory on the NAS not allocated to the VM. Otherwise the system will just slow down to like mud speed. Next, in order to install Android, we need Android. And there are loads of ways in which you can download. And if you go to android-x86.org, they've got lots of different releases of the Android software. I'm going to be using Android 9 today, but there are other versions. I don't think there is a completely stable and downloadable VM version of Android 10 right now. But maybe by the time you're watching this video in the future, there have been newer versions. There are uh, equally even better stable versions of Android 8 and the further back you go the more there is. But today I'm going to be utilizing Android 9 RC1 that was released at the closing stages of February 2020. So you download this application, it's very straightforward, you don't need to sign up for it and then get that ISO, that ISO image and upload it to the NAS and make sure you keep track of where it is. Uh, ignore this clean thing, it's because I've been chopping and changing drives for a Seagate Iron Wolf video, uh, which is coming very, very soon. Self-plug. Nice. Now, in order to perform these actions today, you will need to utilize this uh, QNAP Virtualization Station application. It's available completely for free in the App Center, and it's down here. Completely for free. I've disabled a bunch of apps to keep things nice and smooth because of OBS running here in the background, but these won't be disabled on your system. Just bear in mind you will need to have enough memory to support all these apps as well as the VM. Once you've installed the free virtualization station app, you can open it nice and easy and this is how it looks, nice and straightforward. Now virtualization station three is still one of the very best NAS VM softwares out there. I'd even go as far as to say it is the best just because of all the things it offers, notwithstanding the fact that you can download VMs in their VM marketplace, although I have disabled the internet for this video because I don't want interruptions. You can go over to the overview and download a free Windows VM to test straight away. You can do all kinds of stuff as well as importing VMs from programs like uh, VMware, uh, program, um, platforms like VMware and Hyper-V. 
But today we want to create that Android VM, and for that we go to Create VM. We name it, in this case Android, and we select the OS type we're going to be using. Now there's lots to choose from. If you're using Ubuntu, select Linux. If you're using Windows, shockingly, use Windows. But for now, I'm going to select Android. There are different versions available, but in Android, there's only going to be the one drop down, but that is sufficient for our video. Next, we assign the number of the CPU cores on our processor. So once again, make sure it is a four core CPU. You can run Virtualization Station on a two core NAS, but it is not going to perform well. And one core to run your NAS task is just not sufficient. So I'm gonna go for a four core NAS right now, and I'm gonna use two of those cores to this VM. So when the VM's in operation, the virtual machine, it will not allow the system to use those cores. Next, memory. I'm gonna use two gig of my four gig of available memory to this virtual machine, which means when it's in operation, this two gig is going to be blocked and used just for this VM. So make sure you've got enough memory for all of your tasks in and outside of the VM. Next in CD image, I click browse. And in this download folder here, I've downloaded lots of different ISOs and virtual machines and games that I'm going to be running in future videos inside a VM. This one, the Dark Souls one, is going to be particularly good because I've installed a graphics card and a NAS. And I'm going to be running a game on a VM accessible over the network or the internet. But for now, let's stay on track. We want to find our copy of Android 9, which is right here, and then click OK. So just like if you're installing Android or Windows on a, a standard physical PC, what's happening now is this virtual machine has a virtual CD drive, which I've now put a virtual CD into. After this, we have to select where the data of the VM is gonna live. So I'm going to stick it down here in my homes folder, but I recommend you create an individual folder for your VMs so that all the data from those VMs is protected in its own location. Then click OK. From here, select how much storage you want to give the VM, and this is going to be how much the C drive or the local drive of that virtual machine has. And you can increase this figure um, if the VM is powered down in the settings menu that I'll show you in just a moment. For now, I'm just going to give it 250 gig. When using the Virtualization Station app for the first time, it will recommend that you create a virtual switch. And what this is, is a virtual equivalent of a physical switch. And this allows you to integrate those virtual machines with the NAS and the outside physical world, such as your network and the internet. So just use the one that they've created for you during the installation of Virtualization Station. But you can create your own if you so choose. Finally, it recommends that you create a password to access the VM. Now, you've already got the login password for the NAS to protect you, but it does recommend you create a VNC password, which I'm not going to bother with today. But for security, maybe give it a look. From there, I'm going to click OK. And then even though it's going to keep reminding me that I should use a password, I don't have to. Then I click Create. So in the background, We've now got our virtual Android machine here on the NAS. We can still use the NAS for all the other stuff that we normally would. It's all there running in the background. And when we run our VM, we can access it in a number of ways. But before we do that, let's look at the settings. The settings on the bottom will allow us to remote access our VM uh, uh, via the network or the internet and give us the settings on how to do it. Next, we can introduce new CDs and DVDs, virtual CDs and DVDs, to our virtual disk drive, as well as assigning the USB port on our NAS to the VM. What that means is you can select physical USB ports on your QNAP NAS, and the VM will treat them like it's its own. Connect a webcam, a games controller, a printer, whatever you want to do, you can connect a physical USB device to the physical NAS and it will be seen by the virtual Android or Windows virtual machine. You can create snapshots, which are kind of like save spots that take a snap, an image, a save of your VM that you can return to over time. You can then clone those if you wish and create separate VMs or separate instances of an A-B test scenario, which is quite handy for testing how software is gonna behave on a certain platform, be it Android or another virtual one. 
On top of that, you can export the VM so it can be a package that you can take over to another NAS or share the link to the VM for other users via the network or the internet. Delete the whole VM and start from scratch or go into the settings menu to change some of the settings we did earlier, such as the amount of memory we've allocated, storage, or even adding PCIe cards, such as GPU cards and more. It's a very, very good platform and not too complex either. On top of that, we can individually change those settings, but only when the VM is deactivated. None of these settings can be changed when the VM is in operation. And there's even more options the further we dig. But without further ado, let's boot our virtual machine. The virtual machine can be accessed either via your web browser. It can be seen here and accessed by clicking that icon there. Or you can use tools such as Remote Desktop Connection and VNC Viewer if you so choose. For now, I'm going to use the web browser, but this web browser will be more than sufficient. If we click here, it will open up a new tab. And here is the VNC output of our Android VM. And it's worth mentioning that there are lots of ways to install Wind, um, Android version 9. For now, I am going to run the VM installation directly off of the CD. This does mean that we can't save many of our settings and will always require the CD to run or the virtual CD, but you can do a full installation of Android to the hard drive, the virtual hard drive you created, if it is that you're going to be using this long term. So I strongly recommend that third option for you people that are going to use this VM long term rather than testing. It's also worth highlighting that the VM tool has lots of options too. You can change the display quality, lower and higher, to lower latency and make it much faster in terms of access speed to your virtual machine. You can change how you see it. You can even act, uh, physically touch buttons within the VM. And what that means is right now on my local PC, if I clicked Control Alt Delete, it wouldn't affect the VM, it would only affect my local system and open up the task manager and probably kill my copy of OBS happening right now. So do bear in mind that these options here are for actioning within the VM, not outside of the VM. And there's loads more options too as you go. But for now, let's action and run the Android version, the Android VM installation on our QNAP NAS. Now this can take a few minutes, but it is an incredibly straightforward installation and anyone that's ever utilized a new tablet or new Android phone will be familiar with the first time setup of Android. Remember, while we're doing this, in the background, the QNAP NAS is still completely usable, although system resources are now creeping up because I'm at the moment running a surveillance platform and Plex alongside the VM. So bear in mind, this is a clear indication that four gig of memory is not sufficient for what I'm doing, and it might not be sufficient for you. So do work out how much memory the applications you use daily, um, how much memory they use, and make sure you can balance that against the VM. Going back into the VM, we can see that the first time initialization has begun, and it's incredibly straightforward. You can connect a USB wireless dongle to a QNAP NAS and therefore take advantage of Wi-Fi in your Android VM. But bear in mind that thanks to the virtual switch and the settings within Android, you can just use a standard network connection if you choose. Carrying on forward, this is just a simple installation of Android, uh, Android as you would expect, even on a physical level. And for now, I'm just going to install uh, get the time right, so I'm in Greenwich Mean Time, in good old Blighty. So we go to um, the one, where is it? There's London. There's the time right now. Click Next, and we can continue our installation. Again, loads of options here which you should read and tailor to your own specific needs for your VM. And, of course, you can use touchscreen devices to access your VM. So if you're using an iPad, for example, you can have an iPad with a connection to a virtual copy of Android and therefore be able to run um, Android applications and an Android user interface very easily. And bear in mind that you can use touchscreen laptops as well, like I'm using right now. There's lots of ways in which you can boot it with Taskbar being the more mobile-centric version 
of the user interface and the option screen too but for now I'm going to use quick step but you can flick between them if you so choose later on and there you have it Android is now booted our virtual machine of Android is completely accessible we can go to the um, settings bar at the top uh, at the bottom and see all of the applications that are already pre-installed and you can access lots of things like the options menu and more very very easily if you connect Bluetooth dongles, you can use that too. And remember, this is designed to give you that virtual user interface of a Android OS. Hopefully, uh, um, Android 10 will be with us very, very soon, with Android 11 being announced and revealed later in 2020. And I'll, of course, be doing VMs on those, alongside lots of other VMs throughout the course of this year. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you have found this video helpful, do click like. If you want to stay tuned to all the other VM videos I'm going to be doing soon with QNAP and all the other NAS brands, click subscribe and do visit the links in the description for more wordy, text-based versions of the installation of these, along with more exclusives for NAS. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do click the links in the description to span and more to get hold of your NAS today. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.